Hi everyone, welcome. Um, so Lisa and I are just going to talk about modern parenting today, but just to do a bit more of an introduction, as Rose Ellen said, um, I am now working full-time at Vogue as Beauty and Lifestyle Director, um, but I also am writing and curating content for Fifi and Friends, which is an editorial platform for mums and dads, um, and what we're trying to do is just create content that's relatable um, for the modern working parent. Yeah, so um, I went back to work after um, Eliza was 13 months. I went back um, as a full-time employee for Marie Claire. And um, it was very hard. So today we're talking about separation anxiety. And um, I'd say that Eliza's actually, my daughter Eliza, who's now 15 months, she's actually getting on really well. Um, she's really enjoying being with her nanny for some of the time, my mum for some of the time, and her dad for some of the time, part of the weeks. And um, I'm the one that's sort of suffering from separation anxiety. And I found going back to work actually really difficult. Um, I, uh, I actually found it um, extremely hard and I found it very panicky and I had really bad anxiety. So um, today I thought uh, I'd really like to give some tips um, on uh, what I did to sort of help get over that. Um, but one of the biggest things I think was um, I wish that I went back gradually and uh, probably, you know, doing two days a week as opposed to straight in at five days a week. Did you Did have you keeping in touch days? No, I didn't yeah. actually. I should have, yeah, gone yeah. back to work very, very gradually. And uh, I found that um, quite difficult all of a sudden being in an office for five days a week, looking at a screen thinking, what the hell am I doing here? I'm completely different. I might, you know, I was like, I couldn't even use my mouse on my computer. Um, so uh, that was a bit of a problem. But there's lots of things that I do as well with Eliza to sort of help with her anxiety. And um, I think keeping goodbyes very sort of swift and brief um, is a good thing. Mm. Do you find the same, yeah. Jess? And, and I found actually saying goodbye because I think there's quite a bit mm. of conflicting opinions out there of whether you should just leave and hope they don't notice yeah. or you should actually physically say goodbye so they can process that you're leaving yeah and so I would do the latter exactly. and I would make a point of being like bye Noah mommy's going to work now um so hopefully as he gets older he understands a the concept of work b the concept that I will be coming back yeah exactly. um and so, so that he doesn't get too upset, and it's it's been yeah. okay thus far. Yeah, Do I think it's a lot. Yeah, I think it's a lot about them trusting you as well. Mm. So, um, like I actually used to, I did used to sneak off and shut the door and say, "Oh my God, I can't." You know, I I, I was the one that couldn't bear her getting upset and hearing her cry. Mm. But actually, um, after I w was gone for one minute, she was absolutely fine, and the nanny would say, "Don't worry, she's fine." Mm. So I think it's about them trusting you and, and you telling them what they'll be doing during the day and what I'll be doing during the day. And they, they can sort of visualise that then and know what's going on. Yeah. Um, and I think so much of, mod, like, you know, this term modern parenting, it's, it's, you, it's so much just trial and error <laughs> and, and figuring it all out as you go. And I had so many girlfriends giving me advice on what to do, what not to do. Um, some of it worked, some didn't, but I found definitely the going back to work part probably the hardest part of parenting, full stop. Because um, like you're saying, Lisa, there's so much there's so much of that mum guilt, and I think mum guilt is quite a big thing, um, whether you're working, whether you're not working, whether you have a nanny, whether your kid's at nursery. Um, mum guilt is impossible to escape, so I think it's just doing the best for, for you yeah, absolutely. and your kid. And, and I went back to work when Noah was slightly younger, um, so he wasn't yet old enough, I think, to, to process that I was leaving. It was almost like whether I left for an hour or 12, he didn't really understand so um so so i suppose maybe one tip that i would give is to is is that nine months is a bit of a sweet spot because they don't get so attached to you yet and i and i was okay to go back to work at that point i think just knowing me if i'd have left it longer i would have found it harder to leave him how do you feel about um screen time like cartoons and things like that yeah. for noah i mean i, I was i think we were we were talking about it before and i'm 
my husband and I are very different in our approach. I'm, I'm sort of everything in moderation. So if we're on a flight and it's like we went to LA when he was tiny and it was horrendous, <laughs> but the only thing that made it slightly bearable was the fact I had a phone with me. Um, but he is very, very anti. And so um, I just feel like as long as he's not obsessed with the phone, then a cartoon every once in a while is not the end of the world. But my husband is really, really anti. Um, so we have a bit of a tussle at home about it, actually. Yeah, we do as well, actually. We were saying just now that um, it's exactly the same for me. My partner just will not let Eliza even look at my phone. And um, even if it's just to stop her crying or, you know, and, I, and sometimes I feel like I need something to distract her and just to break the, you know, break what's going on. But um, he's like, don't give her that phone. So it's, um, it's quite tricky. And I, I'm not sure about my feelings about... Um, sort of DVDs, sort of educational DVDs, and whether they do actually help or not. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, a, a different sort of opinions on that. Yeah. So. And I, I don't know, I just think, you know, some of it ca can be educational in a way, but it, that it makes it fun. So, you know, we've been learning about animals. He's obsessed with animals. He's obsessed with the zoo. Um, and I'm obsessed with The Lion King. So I was like, this is a great moment to introduce The Lion King to him. So um, rather than sitting down and watching the whole film, we'll watch snippets of the songs. And he's like, giraffe, zebra, lion. And, and then I'm like, what's that? And so, and with the songs, he, he becomes familiar with it. Um, so now he like asks for zebra. And I know that means that he wants to watch yeah. The Lion King. And it's a little fun moment, but I've not yet had the thing where we sit down and watch a movie together. Yeah. Um, so again, that's my kind of like moderation, building in a bit of moderation when it comes to, to babies and tech. I think it's great as well if the care if the baby's carer is really um, being interactive as well mm. with the screen. And I think mm. that that's... Um, I think it's all about being socially interactive. And I think if you just plop a child in front of a screen, then that mm. might be, you know, mm. I mean, you, just, you do need respite. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, if, if you're more interactive and you're sort of being more sociable with what's going on on the screen, then that mm. would really help too. And I think it's amazing, like, um, tech today. So m my brother doesn't live in the UK. He lives in Spain. And... Um, FaceTime is like a game changer because he's lived there ever since Noah's been born. And if it weren't for FaceTime, like Noah wouldn't necessarily even know who he is. So um, his name's Julian and he calls him Juju. And so he'll point at the phone and he'll say, Juju. And so we'll call him yeah. and like they FaceTime together. And that's obviously no replica for a real relationship. But I feel like where you can't have one, actually it's, it's quite amazing because they get to interact Absolutely. in some way yeah. um, and so it's a bit of a stopgap until he does come home and we're able to yeah. see each other I mean, and do you do it with um, your husband? Yeah, so um, my partner lives in um, Gloucestershire during the week when I'm in London. So I really need Eliza to sort of stay in contact with Casper, but she's way too young to speak to him on the phone. So um, I get the computer up in the evenings and then Casper's on, you know, on Skype or on FaceTime. And it's amazing. And that interaction still is key. So um, she will copy things that Casper does on FaceTime or Skype. Um, um, but she, because she knows that's her dad and um, she's really sort of relating to him. But I think if that was um, a cartoon or um, something else, she doesn't copy that sort of, you know, the, the actions on the screen. So um, I do think it's very interactive for them. Mm. But yeah, she's, she's on FaceTime sort of most evenings, really. Yeah. And I think it can go the other way. So um, Alice Manning, who's another journalist that we know, she's, she's a freelancer. She um, lives in Suffolk. She was working in London for the full week. And she was FaceTiming her little boy, Otto, who's two. She was FaceTiming him every night. And she wrote a piece for Fifi and Friends because um, he would get really upset. So he would be looking at her on FaceTime and he would be really crying because he's like, I can see you, but you're not here. Yeah. So I don't know if it's an age thing also that our babies are not quite um, at the age of two yet. But So I'm just waiting for that moment when it kind mm. of maybe changes. Um, but I do a lot of FaceTime at my desk if I'm working late. Um, I put my headphones in and like we have a little chat before he goes to bed. And I feel like 
maybe it's a bit selfish because I feel like I need that in my day to validate the day that I've seen him before he goes to bed. But I think he's just, a, he, and he, he's, he likes it, but then he just gets a bit bored sometimes and he's like, whatever, it's time for my stories. <laughs> okay.